everybody, Michael here. So we want to talk about the future of SEO. Uh, so one big change is we're seeing a shift in the focus on voice search. I don't think this changes anything for our tactics of using people also asked content. That content is still very good and reflects a lot of natural questions that happen on the internet. But there is a shift happening away from voice search. So these really long uh, questions that are written out in detail uh, that are typical of sort of the long tail of uh, the voice search world, those may become less important. We were kind of headed down a road for a while of voice search being front and center, but it looks to be tapering off. So what else is going to replace uh, that as a focus for us uh, for doing SEO? And what are some of the other changes that are coming at Google that are going to change how we think about search results and content that we develop for search engines. So first up is Index Now. Index Now is an open source uh, engine used by search engines to discover new content. And if this is adopted by Google, as it has been by some other search engines, it's going to significantly reduce the amount of energy they have to use to go out and index a website to catch new pages. So it's a way to proactively submit pages and updates and updated websites so that all search engines can go to one place and just get a feed of what's been updated. So keep an eye out for that. That's something that's going to be changing in search and could become a bigger factor if, if Google makes a, a switch and fully adopts it. And again, that's index now. Next up is a big update coming from Google called Mum. Uh, this is on the scale of Rank Brain and BERT, some of the biggest sort of milestones in the history of Google. This is a move toward more zero search results listings on the Google search results pages. So if you're familiar with schema and ways to get your content into the search results page itself so that the user doesn't even have to click through to go to your website to see the content, this is going to advance that type of experience further. So mom is happening. It's going to be a big deal. It's We're already seeing some of the changes that are happening on Google uh, in this direction, but this is uh, sort of on the scale with BERT. It's going to be a big deal. It's uh, short for multitask united model. And uh, part of what this accomplishes is looking at content in different formats and languages all at one time. And so the indexing and the handling of new content faster is a part of this. And mom helps make that happen. Uh, next up is Lambda. Uh, this is the language model for dialogue applications. And this is really sort of a new, um, a, a new beachhead for Google to take. Uh, it gets them into the world of more conversational search experiences. Uh, that's happening a lot through Google Assistant, but it's also a way to create more open-ended back and forth conversations that can be used in a number of different ways. And so right now we typically think of Google as, uh, in terms of Google search as a search box and we get results. But if you take a second and think about it, there's actually a lot more happening. Uh, there's so much happening on the search results page with uh, both search results and other Google services like Google Maps and um, it's, you know, Chrome is integrated with Google Apps. So we've got to kind of take off our Google as search engine lenses and think about how broad Google really is and how much their search index is impacting their other products and services. Lambda is going to be a technical hub for making a lot more of those natural interactions and those question and answer formats possible with Google as a search engine. So it's going to be very impactful and uh, change a lot of how we think about Google just as seeing more robust search results pages has changed how we think of Google. Uh, the Google search results page is now not really so much like a, a listing of a search as it is sort of a Swiss army knife of different capabilities and different next steps based on the type of the search. Um, you know, restaurant listings, for example, as opposed to just the recipe that you were looking forward to finding. Uh, and so Google is trying to find out intent with these uh, new capabilities and these new tools so that they can do more to decide which tools in the Swiss Army knife to flip open for you as you go into the next step of a particular search. And so, yeah, Lambda is going to be a big deal. It's going to change a lot of things about the core of what uh, we think of as a search engine and how it works. All right, next up is passage indexing. 
A lot of what's happening now on the search results page has to do with Google continuing their march to try to pull content up to what we call position zero or right there on the page. And so how we structure and handle passages of content is going to impact how those get pulled and used by Google uh, under fair use law, essentially, to show a sample of what one will find if they click through and see the search results page. So this passage indexing, it's a little bit of, in my mind, it's kind of parallel to schema. It, it, it's a way that we're going to have to think about passages of content, similar to how we would think about content in the past that we're going to tag up with schema to push it into that search results uh, position zero. Uh, so yeah, this is a big change. And so it takes us further down the road of longer form content. And then the next big change that's happening, we've mentioned this a couple of times, is intent. Intent is the key that Google is trying to solve. And this intersects with the shift toward AI for content producers. Intent is really the heart and soul of the searcher side of the equation. And then content is the other side. And so both sides of this equation have to have essentially a meet cute for it to be a good search result that gives the user something they're looking for. If the user is working with intent, which is what a human is always doing 99% uh, of the time, they're trying to achieve something when they do a search, that intent and getting at that intent through either the initial search and how the intent is usually relevant to that exact letter for letter search or subsequent searches and how the user is going through a flow of searches and behaviors. Those tell Google something about the searcher and what they're trying to accomplish. And based on what Google, Google can know about that user, typical types of search activity are going to be very common. I take a group of fathers and sons out on the Appalachian Trail every year. And so if I'm doing a search for a small um, hostel near the trail, they may know more about me in the future and use what they know about me and say, oh, he's always looking for hostels because he goes there, not because of some random other search I could be doing with the same text, maybe because of a coincidence about the words that are used to name the hostel that are also the name of something you know across the country on a different trail. And so this intent uh, data is going to tell Google something about the user side of the equation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on the other side of the equation, content, content publishers. The more that we get tempted to use AI and things that maybe don't feel like they have a heart and soul, but they communicate ideas in a body of material, Google is going to be able to discern that that content reflects low intent, that it doesn't really answer the question or get at the new sort of insight that the searcher is trying to gain. And so Google is doing things now to try to uh, understand intent with content using humans and then uh, factor that into how much they value that particular piece of content. So it's sort of AI powered humans evaluating content so that they can train their own AI to offer content to users that actually has real authentic insight into what the user is trying to do. So this is sort of a clash of the titans, but what Google is doing is they're balancing the scale on their side of the human component, uh, and it's happening through this lens of intent, but it has to happen on both sides of the equation. So I think this is a little bit of a cautionary tale for marketers and publishers who are excited about all the money they're going to save with AI content, because if everyone can do it, then it doesn't work because it's just an arms race and everyone uses it. It floods the space and Google has to find some other way to get at the things that are really more valuable, which are typically going to be unique, very human and very insightful and useful to a searcher as they're on their journey and as Google can hone in on what that user's intent is. So search intent is going to be a major component of SEO going forward. And AI is going to be fought with pros and cons on both sides of the equation. It's either going to be used or punished uh, by Google based on where they are in the conversation with the marketplace. All right, next up, 
local SEO. Localized SEO is going to continue to become more powerful. As users have intent, that's harder and harder to discern. And AI generates more and more volume of content that's harder and harder for Google to identify something that's truly valuable. They can always default to what they know works. And for Google in the last couple of years, as we've seen it, that's tended to be a lot of local results. So even if you're looking for something and you're trying to find something that's more generally true or you're researching a topic and you're not necessarily on your phone trying to find out when the restaurant closes or something, Google is often defaulting to more local heavy results almost as a fail safe. It's sort of something that they know they can get right in a world of AI with content publishers flooding the space with low quality AI content. So we see localized SEO and local SEO results continuing to become more powerful and more important. That helps some people and it hurts some people. Uh, if you have a service that you provide in a particular market or region, uh, focusing on that with all of your content strategy becomes more important. If you off offer something nationally or globally, you've got a little bit no more noise that you've got to work through to make your results primary. And so the way you do that is to continue to help make it clear that it's not relevant to those local search listings, but it's also just part of the share of the pie that Google is choosing to devote to local search results. All right. So last up, reporting. Reporting is going to change. Uh, Google has a lot of capabilities that they're starting to open up more and more to publishers and marketers and people who want to use Google's tools to serve up to Google more of what Google wants. And that's going to become more important in the future as we're finding Google has new tools for better serving their audience. So whereas SEO has been a bit of a wild west and whoever could out compete everyone could always win, Google is now giving us marketers more tools that we can use to reach the right people and not waste the time of the people that we don't need to reach. Uh, in the past at GoEps, we've been able to rank nationally for lots and lots of terms, even to the point that we're getting leads from out of area. Well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to waste anyone's time. But Google has to make tools available to us and allow us some of the access that we need to avoid that problem. And they're doing that more and more going forward with this set of tools. All right. Hope this has been helpful. This has been What's the Future of SEO? And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.